here is the Bible. You might think it's just a really old book with so many words. But in here, there are stories that have been told and retold for thousands of generations. Stories told around campfires, in front of huge crowds. Stories told around the dinner table. Stories that have been made into TV shows or films. Stories that have changed the course of history. Stories you should know. But where should you start? Well, welcome to 10 Must Know Bible Stories. Stories worth exploring. The Easter story is amazing and we would love to tell it to you today. And in fact, even though we celebrate Easter on one Sunday, it's actually a story that takes place over the course of a whole week. There's so many special things that happen there. Sometimes we call it Holy Week. So let's start at the very beginning. Let's start at Palm Sunday, a week before we celebrate Easter. Our story starts on Palm Sunday. Jesus and his friends are traveling down the main road into Jerusalem. They've come for the Passover celebration. Jesus is riding on a donkey and crowds of people hear that Jesus is coming. They've heard about the things that he's done and they want to see him. Yeah, the people are delighted to see Jesus. They want to welcome him like a king and so they lay down their coats and they lay down their palm branches and they shout Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But not everyone was happy. Some didn't like that Jesus was getting all this attention and so they started to plot plot a way to have him arrested, plot a way to get rid of him for good. Here's a craft you can do to remember Palm Sunday. You can use cutouts of palms like this, you'll need two, or just green paper, two pieces, or you can fold it in half. First, draw your palm, which just looks like a big fat leaf on the page. Remember to have two sides to it. Then you cut it all out. Now, back in Jesus' day in Bible times, they didn't have balloons or banners or open-top buses for celebrations. Instead, if they were excited, the people would cut down palm branches and wave them in celebration. That's what they did when Jesus arrived. Now, on your palm branch, you want to cut out little triangles like this so it looks proper. But don't cut all the way, otherwise you'll cut your palm in half. And then pull out those little pieces. It's kind of sad, isn't it, when everyone else is celebrating, people are so excited to see Jesus, while some of the leaders were jealous, plotting against him, plotting to kill Jesus. I hope you've never felt jealous like that. All right, last step, you need a little popsicle stick and some glue on both sides so you can hold your palm branch up. Put it in the middle, let it dry for a while, and then you have a palm branch to wave, just like they did on the first Palm Sunday. On the Thursday of that week, Jesus and his friends celebrated Passover together. Passover was something they celebrated every year. It was a time they came together and remembered all the good things that God had done for them in the past. And this year started like every other year. They had a meal together, enjoying each other's company, eating and drinking together. But then Jesus did something new. He wanted them to remember the past, what God had done, but he also wanted to say, God is going to do a new thing. So it was at this point during the meal where he took some of the bread that was there and he broke it and he talked about how this bread was his body that was being broken for them. And then later he took the cup of wine and he said, this is my blood poured out for you. And the disciples didn't really understand what he meant, but what Jesus was saying was, Soon he was going to die, and he wanted them to remember this. Because what Jesus was doing was part of God's plan. This was why he had come, and this meal was a way of remembering exactly what God was doing for them. Now, after this very important meal, Jesus' Last Supper, 
while he's feeling sad. He knows what's coming and he wants to go somewhere to pray. And so he and the disciples go out into the night to one of their favorite places, a park in the city called the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, some important things happen here, but we thought rather than telling you the story, you could listen to it. You could even turn off the lights in your classroom to pretend like you're in the garden with Jesus. So have a listen and see if you can piece together what happens in the garden. That Passover meal would come to be known as the Last Supper because it was the last time that Jesus would share a meal with his disciples before his death. Because right after this meal, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And when he was there, one of his followers, Judas, betrayed him. And Jesus was arrested and he was taken away. He was put on trial and he was found guilty even though he had done nothing wrong. And his punishment, the penalty for this crime that he had not committed was to die on the cross. Jesus had done nothing wrong. 
He was completely innocent, but he was taken to a cross. He was nailed to it and he died. Jesus' friends were so sad, but Jesus was the son of God. He could have stopped this at any time, but he knew it had to happen. He knew he had to die on the cross, that it was part of God's great plan. We just heard the story about how Jesus died on the cross. And the cross really is the big symbol of Christianity. And really, once you think about it, you see crosses everywhere. You see crosses on the tops of churches, of course, or maybe on their walls. You see crosses on the fronts of Bibles. But you see crosses more places than that, don't you? What do you think I'm drawing now? Ah, you're right, it's a graveyard. A lot of graves will have crosses on them as well. I wonder why that is. What do you think it symbolizes? Hmm. Now in the history of Scotland as well, you see lots of crosses from the first Celtic Christians who made big Celtic crosses out of stone and they were so ornate. They had beautiful carvings on them. That's a big part of Scottish and Irish history, a Celtic cross keep an eye out for them. They're very special. But in modern times, well, a lot of people would wear a cross. Maybe your granny has a cross necklace that she likes to wear, or someone else in your family might have one. People also might get tattoos of crosses on their arms or on their backs. Isn't that interesting? Hmm, I wonder why someone would do that. Because remember, the cross is where Jesus died. Isn't it a sad thing? Shouldn't we all be really sad that Jesus died rather than putting it on buildings or even on tattoos? Hmm, what do you think? Why is the cross so important to Christians? Three days later, after Jesus had died, his friends and followers were scared and afraid. Some of them were hiding away, worried that they would get arrested too. But some of them were preparing for Jesus' funeral. Some of the ladies went to Jesus' tomb, the big cave where he'd been buried. They were expecting to find the big stone rolled over the front of it. But when they got there, the stone had been rolled away and Jesus' body had gone. But that is just the beginning of where the amazing things happen because when the women were there an angel appeared to them and they said why are you looking for Jesus here he's not here he is alive he really had died on the cross three days earlier but he had risen back to life and not only that but just a little bit later these same women saw Jesus in the garden and others went on to see him too on the road by the lake in an upper room until 500 different people all saw Jesus who had risen back to life. And Jesus explained to them why he had had to do it, why he had had to die and come back to life. He explained to them that this was God's great plan. This was God's plan so that whoever believes in Jesus, believes he is the Son of God, would be able to be God's friends now and forever in heaven. The news spread quickly. Soon all of Jerusalem was talking about Jesus. More and more people heard about it, more and more people saw him with their very own eyes, and more and more people started to believe that Jesus really was God's son. He had really died, and he had really come alive again. And the story doesn't stop there because the good news of Jesus continued to spread. It spread all throughout the Roman Empire, and then it started to go wider than that. It started to spread all across the world to every nation. And fast forward to today, there are over 2 billion Christians in the world, including lots here in Scotland, including Sue and myself. And so this Easter, 2,000 years after Jesus died and rose again, we will still be celebrating all that he has done for us. And we hope that you will be too.